big hand clap of praise. All right, y'all can have a seat real quick. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're looking really good tonight. Say, but there's some room next to you. See, some of you don't have neighbors on the right and the left, and we need to take care of that. Okay? That's right. We need to have more people in here uh, to, to, hit, to, to get in on all this business. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, of course, Daniel, and we could have stayed there all night, couldn't we? And uh, they made up their mind that they was going to serve God no matter Amen. what the cost. Okay? They made up their mind. So make up your mind right now. If you haven't already, you're going to be at Revival every night this week. Amen. And uh, if you don't know uh, about the love offering we're taking up for the, uh, for the Crusaders, it's not a secret, okay? <laughs> we're taking up a love offering for them. They travel all around the country and spread the good news of Jesus Christ and minister and do so many things, and we get to get in on their ministry. Amen. Uh, we get to uh, help them pay their bills and, and do things that they do and everything and send them out of here better than they came in here. Amen? Amen. That's the Green Valley way. Amen? Amen. Okay. So uh, be praying about the love offering and everything. We'll take that up at the end of the service, so uh, just... Uh, be in prayer about that. Pray for them, okay? This is not easy. Is it? <laughs> not at all. No. Not at all. But it's worth it. Amen. I think I think I think it that she's picking on y'all. I'm gonna stay out of this. Uh, I ain't got no dog in this hunt. <laughs> but anyway, invite folks, get them to come out. Be in prayer. Be in prayer. Be in prayer. All right. Amen. I want you to stand. Let's sing this course together. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go.
give the Lord a big hand and clap of praise. You may be seated. You know, we, we were singing that song. I was thinking about the last time we, we left here. And the bus went into the shop. For, we're very thankful for the offerings that were given and your, your church, how it supported us and getting that bus back on the road. And I thought about wherever he leads, I'll go. Because the next stop we went, we had to pull, up, pull all of our, bunk, our beds and sheets and mattresses out of the bus. And we went to a little small church in Arkansas, a little mission church. And we, sl we slept in floor, and I, they slept on the floor, Kendra and Stephen did. And we had a rollout bed, uh, couch, and with water that would, was running <coughs> down into the floor. The, 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 walls were, the walls were open with insulation on there, and it's a mission church. You know, wherever he leads, I'll go. And woke up to uh, spiders in bed and all kinds of things that week. And you know, I said, Lord, what are you doing? What are you preparing us for? And then the next week, we bus is still in the shop, and we went on to, uh, and that week we seen a, a granddaughter, a mom, and a grandmother all saved that week and, and got to see them all baptized that week. So that was pretty awesome, along with some others. Little small mission churches, I and I said, your offerings have taken us places that we never thought we'd get to go. That particular week, we uh, did five services to a mission church. And I know it's more than five that were saved. I'm not sure, seven, eight, I don't know. But at the end, they gave us $100. And I don't know about you, but I can't take $100 from a mission church. So your offerings carried us a lot further than that next week. Amen. Because we gave that money back to that church and asked them to put it back into that community. And so then the next week, we spent in Little Rock. Uh, no, is it Little Rock? Yeah, Benton. In a um, trailer while our bus was being worked on. And we woke up, and they had beds down there. And Scott and Amber had came that weekend to sing and be with us. And so we're all in this double, this little, uh, this fifth wheel. And we woke up to storms again in the, in the ceiling, just oh leaking. Oh and uh, so wherever he leads, I'll go. And I'm just thankful Amen. that he continues to send us and he, and for y'all's love and your support all year long. Um, I know it's not just this week. I feel the prayers and I feel the love and, and the friendships that we've made here. And I thank y'all. Tempted and tried, we off me.
we're going to understand it. Amen. I want to ask you, are you on the battlefield for the Lord? I don't think y'all got that. That means yes. This means no. Are you on the battlefield for the Lord? exciting to be back with y'all and just to share and uh, I was back at the of Easter we we always do a, the Lord has opened the door for us to do a revival at our home church uh, in Texacana and so we we were there and it was several weeks prior to that I caught the crud and I'm talking about I told him I sounded like Mr. Haney on steroids I didn't have any singing voice whatsoever I don't have a lot as it is but I'm thankful for what God gave me. And so, but we had finished up a revival and uh, it was up in the, the Stuttgart area. And I had really strained my voice trying to sing and to preach with, a, with that crud. Well, it paid off the next week because I didn't have anything hardly. And so a, a doctor told me, he said, you need to be quiet for several days to let it try to heal up. That's impossible. <laughs> That's impossible. And so uh, we were doing the revival, and, and that's before Stephen came back on the road with us. And so Stephen and, I, and, and all of us go to the, the same church in Texacana. And so we were kind of talking before because we do a reenactment of the Last Supper on Good Friday uh, every year. Uh, we host that. And, and so Stephen is a very integral part of that. He's the, the technical guy, and 
we had the lights going and they were programmed to turn and go. He, he knows how to do all that kind of stuff. And so he was streaming it on the internet. And so there was a lot of things that went into that. And so I talked to him about helping us. And he said, so he asked me this question. He said, you think it will be a problem for me to sing some with y'all? And I said, no, why not a problem? He said, well, I didn't want to be uncomfortable. Well, then it's going to be uncomfortable to me. I said, we're all part of the same family of God. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and so little did I know that God had put him back in place because I didn't have any voice. I could play the piano, and so him and Penny did most of the singing. And so God just to use that. And But while I was up singing one night, I, I remember I was standing there at the piano. It's like somebody come up on this side of me. He said these words. Now, we're in church. I mean, having a great song service and, you know, folks are praising the Lord and everybody's a singing. Miles are going. And all of a sudden, this voice says, I got your voice and you'll never sing again. What are you going to do? <laughs> Did I cower down? No. no. I sent him running in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I told him, no, you don't have my voice because God gave it to me. It belongs to him. And, and so last Sunday night when we were in Miami at the church service down there was the first night that I was able to stand and sing for 45 minutes. And so y'all might get an extra dose this week because I've been saving it up. Amen. And so I'm excited. Can I tell you that God is He's a provider. And he'll meet you right where you're at. Now, once again, the table's been spread, folks. You don't have to wait till the end of the service. Why don't you pull up and feast upon what God's got? Amen. We're talking about revival this week. Man, I, I can't wait every year as we've come up here. And the time that we have as, as men gathered studying and praying, that's special to me. That don't happen at every one of the churches we go to. We, we try to get it to happen that the men will come and, and spend time in the Word praying, but it's... It's very uncommon. So I look so forward to that. So tomorrow night at 6.30, we're going to meet again. The ladies will be back in the fellowship hall. So, huh? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. Six o'clock then. <laughs> we'll be out here at 6.30? Okay. Works for me. I'm going to be, be here, you know. I can start at four. <laughs> it don't matter. But it's a special time to come and prepare us. Because here's the thing about it. We all come in. We've been busy all day. And by the way, tomorrow's Monday. That's a good thing. You know why? It always follows Sunday. Amen. So if you'll get up in the morning saying, hey, this is Monday and that's great. I'm going to serve the Lord today. Amen. I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, uh, throughout the week we're going to share some testimonies of things that happened since we left here because when the disciples would go out and they would come back and they would sit down with Jesus, what would they do? They would talk about the things that they had saw and how they had shared Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to share some things with you this week about what God has done. Penny has already shared. And that was just a brief little bit of what happened at that church and what God uh, it's it's so amazing the places that God has sent us to. And we'll be going back to that church probably the end of May and doing some mission work. In June. So, Amen. Amen. No, June. Huh? In the morning. In June. In the June. Yeah. In June. So if you have any carpenters or anybody that would like to go with us for a, a week. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's not very far. And it's a beautiful place to park. It's in Clinton, in. Arkansas is where it's so. at. So it's just north of Little Rock. And uh, so it's a... It's a wonderful church. It's, they call it the Zoo Church. We'll be working there during the day and have revival services at night. So, um, you know, the one of the things that um, when we were doing a revival that a friend of ours came and sang, another one of those God things that God just sent somebody in the midst because he knew that I wasn't going to be able to. And so I asked her what she's singing. So she got up and she began to sing this song. And this is one of my favorite songs. So I want to ask you this question, the title of the song. Is it well with your soul tonight? 
I pray that it is well with your soul tonight because that is the most important question. There is no question of more importance of knowing your position with Jesus Christ, that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, I pray that you do. I ask you to turn to the book of Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading at verse 12. We find that Paul is incarcerated and that he has, throughout this whole period of time, he has had a guard attached to him day and night. But throughout Paul's life, we find that Paul was one of these, he didn't mind a little bit of affliction, if you will. He didn't mope around and say, woe is me. He looked for every opportunity to share the gospel. So we're talking about revival. One of the things, when revival happens, evangelism automatically starts. Amen. You begin to start seeing folks get saved. You begin to see people's lives change when revival, because revival, we call it a church revival, but my friend, who is the church? We are the church. So it has to start with us. So I wanted us to take a look tonight into this passage of Scripture and see what we could glean from it. And maybe we could take, because I'm afraid there's folks in the church tonight that are sitting right here that you feel like you're bound up and that you can't do anything. Well, my situation is. So let's look at Paul's situation tonight and see what we can glean from it to see if we can take something away from here and say, well, if Brother Paul was able to press on, let me stop right there. Brother Paul, he was a man just like we are. He was a human being. He was not some super creation that God just created for one specific purpose like a superman or a superhero. He was super in serving God because he surrendered to God on the Damascus Road. And he surrendered to what God wanted him to do. It began to, God began to use him and began to see great and mighty things. So I want us to get some clear ground here tonight. He was just like you and I. He was incarcerated with a guard attached to him. Everywhere that Paul went, this, there was a guard that went with him. That meant... If he was walking outside, there was a guard in step with him, walking with him. If he went to the bathroom, there was a guard with him. So when he was eating, there was a guard with him. When he was praying, there was a guard with him. Everywhere that he was incarcerated, there was a guard that was attached to him. We all would say, oh, I can't do nothing. What am I going to do? Woe is me. I'm going to have me a pity party. I'm just going to quit. All these things that Satan will come and throw in your mind, well, what's the use? We're going to find what the use, the reason for it is. So if you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word, Philippians chapter 1. We're going to begin reading at verse 12. Philippians 1, 12 says, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Ain't that some? So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard, the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. Mm. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains and are much more bolder to speak the word without fear. Amen. Let's go back up and look at that verse 14. Most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Now, Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you would reveal yourself to us and that, Lord, true revival, that we would shake off things that we feel that have binded us. And, Lord, if 
we're walking in chains that we would realize that we can still use that for the furtherance of the gospel. So I pray that you'd have your way tonight, Lord. I know you said you are willing if we're willing. So, Lord, we come to you tonight just humble. Again, Lord, I, I don't have anything to say except what you want me to share. So, Lord, I ask you to use me in any way you see fit. It wouldn't be my words, but it'd be you. And, Lord, I pray for the lost that are here tonight. God, I pray that tonight would be the night that they turn to you. And, Lord, I ask you to, right now, we need to hear from you. So have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we find as he, Paul, begins to speak at this very point, he said, but I want you to know, brethren, the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. I'm afraid tonight that there's a lot of folks that when you go through a valley and you're walking through that valley, you don't even look at that aspect. You don't even say, what is the opportunity that I can share the gospel of Jesus Christ? When we begin to walk through the valleys and we feel like that we're up to mud in our waist and that we can't move any further, what do we begin to do? We either begin to slow down, we begin to pack up, we begin to load up, and we say we're getting out of here. I'm done with this. What's the use? What is the use? But we find here is Paul, a man of God. I mean, God chose this man to, to go to the Gentiles. He had a, I mean, he was blinded on the road to Damascus and, and was not a dumb individual. Paul was very highly educated. Paul was so educated that he was in line to be the next great Pharisee. He had been to the greatest universities. He had walked with the greatest ones out there. And he also had such an authority that he cast his vote for Stephen to be stoned. And he basically stood and held the garments as Stephen was stoned. So in the world's eyes, he was, he was, he, he was all that. He was what the world wanted. Paul that point being Saul, he walked around, I'm sure, with his coat on, and probably it didn't touch the ground. He walked with his chest out and his head up high. But on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus Christ. Amen. And his whole life changed. And so as he began to walk after the Lord, he began to see some things, and he began to come across a lot of tribulation he began to come across being accused of things. Next thing you know, he finds himself incarcerated, finds himself being beaten with the rods over and over, many times over. But he says, Brother, I'd have you to know that this has been for the furtherance of the gospel. If we'll get to the point to realize it's not about us, I got my hand up first right now. Because God really, I, I told Peter, a little revival up there when it was just me and her and I had no voice. I never thought it was about me, but maybe in the back of my mind, I thought, well, you know, but Ken, I'm a pretty good singer. I'm, I'm all right. God said, it ain't about you. It's about me. It's about me and what I did on Calvary. And so when we get to that place in our life and we begin to realize that it's about Jesus Christ and not about us. That's the first step in revival. Amen. Realizing it's not about us, but it's about Jesus Christ. And if we will take a look at these, what Paul is showing us right here. Remember, Paul's incarcerated. He got chains on him. It's a glamorous life. It's very glamorous being incarcerated with chains. <clears throat> but as he began there, in that next verse, we find that it's become evident to the whole palace guard. Now, see, they, they worked in shifts. And I believe if the study is correct, they, they worked eight-hour shifts. They would rotate. So before long, he'd gone through the whole palace guard. Somebody had been attached to him. And I'm sure 
Paul. I believe Paul was a pretty in-your-face type guy. I believe he'd get right up in your face. And I wonder if he was a little short guy, maybe thin. We don't know. But he talked about running and running a lot. So I, he must have been an athlete. He must have knew a little bit about it. But here's these soldiers. Now, you got to remember in that day and time, they looked for the biggest and the strongest to be guards, to be part. Well, here, here's Paul. Here's maybe a big, big guard attached to him. Paul's middle of the morning. Well, praise ye the Lord. God is so good. What a beautiful day God's given us. And here's that soldier walking around. You again. You're going to start that again. God is so good. You know God loves you. He died for you. I don't want to hear that mess. Well, praise ye the Lord. He just keeps it up. And before long, it says it's become evident to the whole palace guard. That's right. Not only did they hear, they begin to accept. So what about your chains? Where about, what about where we're at today? See, you don't have to have a guard attached to you to feel like you're bound up. Satan wants to bind you up with all the things of life. Satan wants to tear you down. He wants to, look here, <clears throat> Satan doesn't want compensation. He wants total devastation of you. Right. You, you can't try to pay him off and say, oh, well, well I, I'll, sir, I, I'll give in to the devil over here and then I'll jump back over here to the Lord. No, I'm going to tell you, Satan wants you destroyed. He hates you. He despises you. Because if he can't have you, he wants to destroy you. That's right. So the things of life come along. Oh, and by the way, life happens even after you're saved. Right. There are things that you, I just don't understand. <laughs> what do you think about Paul? Lord, I surrendered to follow you and now I'm chained up. I've been beaten with the rods. But he's still singing, praise ye the Lord, serving him. So what's got you bound up? What's keeping you from having revival? Oh, you just don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand what Jesus went through for you. You don't understand the freedom that we have. He said hey, he's come to set the captive free. You don't have to walk around with those little chains of bondage on you can give them over to the Lord. And he said he'd take care of them. See, we run around and we come to church and we think that uh, Brother Andy can fix anything. I think he's a pretty good guy myself. But we walk out of here, we leave. We walked in. He did what he was supposed to do, but we didn't do what we were supposed to do. We didn't say, Lord, I, it's you. God, it's you that I need. It's you that can take care of the need and my problem. Brother Andy's job is to present the word. Our job is to receive the word, let it apply into our lives. So we want revival. Do we really? What if revival broke out and it didn't stop on Friday night? Amen. What if it started and it didn't stop? That can happen. That can happen because when we, me, you, we realize it's about Jesus and not about us and we realize who we are and who he is, then we begin to start moving into the revival and God says, okay, now you're getting to the point. You're beginning to understand that it, you're going to listen to me and I'll show you some things in your life. See, here was those guards attached. They knew everything about Paul. They knew everything about him. They knew probably how he slept. They knew how he breathed. They knew what he ate. They knew probably his likes, his dislikes. Remember, they're attached to him. Is anybody getting anything out of what I'm saying? 
There's someone the Bible says that sticks closer than a brother. So if we will understand that Jesus Christ, once you meet him as Lord and Savior, he sticks closer than a brother. He knows how you breathe. He knows what you eat. He knows your very thoughts. Now, that's a scary thing right there. He knows those inner thoughts. Oh, we want revival. Well, we got to clean up some inner thoughts. Amen. We got to clean up some outer thoughts. We got to begin to say, Lord, I know you're here. We're in this circle, but there's somebody in the circle with us. It's God. Paul had, I can't even imagine what it'd be like to have somebody attached to you. You got to walk with them. You get out of step, what happens? Somebody's going to trip and fall. And it probably wasn't the guard either. But what's holding you? What's got you bound up? What's got you out of step? What's keeping you from having true revival in your life? Now, don't, all right, somebody just thought, well, it's my husband. No. Somebody thought, well, it's oh, so and so. No. Well, it's that blooming TV. Well, it's right here. We're the only ones that stop us from having revival. It's not the cell phones. It's not the computers. It's not the TVs. It's not the cars. It's not any, anything but us. But if we as individuals will be like Paul and take and look at this whole opportunity that's surrounding us. That we'll take this particular moment and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what the situation is, we're going to serve the Lord. How desperate it looks. Remember, Paul's in prison. It's a very desperate situation. He's desperate to present the gospel. Say they had revival in the prison. There was another time that Paul and Silas were incarcerated. Long about midnight, they were singing, praising God and praying. A great earthquake, it shook and the chains fell off. The gates fell off. But it's the line, it says, and the prisoners were listening. Nobody left, nobody moved. Another great revival happened in prison. Oh, we, we want revival. But it's our situation that's keeping us from having it. My situation is this, is that. You know, Paul said, this has even come for the furtherance of the gospel. If we'll get to that place in our life for the furtherance of the gospel, Jesus Christ, and, and when we push Jesus out front, guess who's behind? We are. And we're in the correct position to follow Jesus. We're in the correct position to see if he makes a left turn, we make a left turn. If he makes a right turn, we make a right turn. But if we're out in front of him, we can't see unless we're looking backwards. He says, follow me. Paul, he, he begins to move forward in this whole situation. As I begin to read through this and study through it this afternoon, and when I got to verse 14, and it said, And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains. We talked about that a little this morning. We want revival. sad thing about it is revival has become a series of meetings where an evangelist comes in and maybe a group comes in and they sing and they have a series of meetings. And then when the series of meetings is over with, they say, oh, it's a great revival. Well, I understand that revival is a personal thing and that it's, it's, sometimes there might not be somebody even walk the aisle 
but people get revived because revival is reviving is what that is. But we say, oh, it was a great revival. But is there a change? See, we see right here, it's become evident to the whole palace guard and that the brethren in the Lord have even been strengthened by my chains. So it wasn't just one step. It wasn't just two steps. There was a lot of things going on. Paul was, when they got saved, they were attaching to him, and they, he was discipling them. He was, he was telling them about Jesus. Eight hours. Can you imagine what it would be like to walk around with Brother Andy for eight hours solid? I'm fixing you up, brother. I'm trying to help you out here. It wouldn't be good. For us to walk around hearing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the time, looking at the obstacles and Paul teaching and saying this is what can happen. And so it says that the brothers in the Lord had even been strengthened because of my chains. It just didn't stop when the whole palace guard got saved. It didn't stop. It began to begin. See, revival should never end. And I'm thankful for Green Valley because most say they do a Wednesday through Sunday or a Sunday through Wednesday. And it's kind of like going to church camp. If you only went to church camp on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it'd be a short church camp because it usually takes till Wednesday for the walls to come down for us to really realize who we are and that we're really nothing without Jesus Christ. And then it's usually Friday when God really begins to deal in our lives. So I'm thankful that we have all the way through Friday because I need it. I need it. I want to leave Green Valley. And as we begin to make our way to Vivian, Louisiana, Sunday morning, I want to blow in there and I want to say Green Valley sent us down here. So it'd be y'all's fault. And that little church that sits down there, by the way, your congregation is a lot bigger than that church is. But I want to go down there revived with a fresh breath. I want to, I want to feel that breath, that fresh breath to, to go down there because when we finish up there, then we'll turn around and we'll drive back to Little Rock. On Monday night, we'll do a fundraiser for the Compassion Center in Little Rock, a homeless shelter. So there will be a lot of stiff neck <laughs> folks with money out there because they're trying to raise support for a great mission because they see thousands saved. But I'm praying that that night there will be some of those folks saved. Amen. See, I want to be strengthened. I want to be attached to God 24-7. <laughs> I don't want to quit on Friday night and say, well, that's in the revival. I want true revival. I want an attachment to God like I've never had before. Paul, this is what Paul is showing us right here. Some folks think that Jesus is a hindrance in their life. Well, I can't watch them TV programs like I used to. You know, my favorite show was All Them Children. Now I can't even watch it. I sit down there and all they see is this one sleeping with this one, this one running around with it, and it just turns my stomach. I, you know, Jesus did that to me. We throw Jesus under the bus for what he, and we don't really give him the respect of who he is, that he's king of kings and lord of lords. We want to say he's some kind of bondage. My friend, he is freedom. He is liberty. He's a very breath of life. Jesus hadn't bound me up one bit. I get, I get tickled at these folks. And Penny, I'm not going to talk about that woman that we met on the ship. <laughs> we had sat down to breakfast. Call us a Bible thumper. I don't care. I like to carry my Bible with me. Amen. So we're sitting down there and... and we was it was a beautiful morning. We was in port at the Grand at the Grand Turks. Beautiful. God had, boy, God made some beautiful places. Oh, yeah. My goodness. And so 
we're right outside the window of there, the ship. We're up on the 12th floor of the ship. This is a big ship. And you're looking out there in that beautiful, clear water. And so we were ha having bre breakfast and talking about how good the Lord was. Well, this table around behind us, they were praying for, for somebody. That kind of caught my attention. See, I want to serve Jesus. I don't care where I'm at. I'm not going to be halfway. If you see me in that bus parked at a Waffle House, praise the Lord, uh, and eating, you're going to see me talking the same talk as if I was in the Grand Turks away from the whole world. I'm not going to change. See, I want him attached 24-7 because it's not you that I'm really worried about because I'm going to stand before him one of these days and I'm going to give an account for every, everything. So as we were sitting there, this this group of folks, and so Penny was sitting kind of, the table was kind of like, like a square, and we was on this side and they was on that side. And we all said, when they said amen, we said amen too. Well, they got their attention. Long story short, at the end, this lady, she got up. And she come by our table. I said I wasn't going to talk about her, Pastor, but I want to warn you. <laughs> when she got up and she began to share thoughts that she had and, you know, and, uh, okay. But what really sent me to whirling was what she had on. She had a cover-up on that was you could see through, and she's wearing a string bikini and calls herself an evangelist. And it says, get sexy on it. <coughs> See, I want to be the same because Jesus is attached. Amen. See, you, you can't serve two masters. Paul was attached with a Roman guard. Now, he could have gave in to the Roman guards and I'm sure got some better treatment, might even got unlatched from the chains. But no, he wasn't concerned about that. He was beginning to see God had him there for a greater reason. He said the whole palace guard. God's got us into a bigger plan than what our little minds can think about. Amen. It's not just a member of Green Valley Baptist Church. It's not that we're just a, a member of the uh, a resident of whatever falls or gore or the surrounding community. God's got a bigger plan. And if we begin to look at that, revival begins to happen. Because remember, we're getting ourselves revived because we're following after Jesus Christ. He has a bigger plan for you to become evident. That should be something that we strive for. Not for our, not for our glory, not to say, woohoo, look what I did. No, it's for the furtherance of the gospel. If we would begin to understand that hell is the same place that Jesus talked about, that it's still the same today as it was back then, but no, you know, folks don't talk about hell anymore. Oh, God's a loving God. God's a God of love. but He's also a just God. And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. But when we act like the world, when we look like the world, <coughs> see, I'm kind of like this. If it quacks and it has feathers and it has webbed feet and it swims, it's probably a duck. Right. If it's red and it has a stem on it and you bite into it and it kind of has a crisp sound to it, it's probably an apple. If it's yellow and it's kind of about this big around and you bite into it and it turns your face like that, it's probably a lemon. There's no hiding the difference. The Roman guard was attached. Paul was still Paul. Amen. Right then. Right. And he had Jesus on his mind. You want true revival this week. 
God wants you to have it. If you want it, He wants you to have it. Put Jesus on your mind. Just start saying, Lord, would you show me? Would you show me? And then you'll find it'll be for the furtherance of the gospel that everybody that you come in contact with, that you'll present Jesus. Several months ago, Penny and I were in Little Rock. It was in Benton, actually. We were coming home from, I don't think, but we had stopped at Waffle House because <laughs> that's what's open late. And so we got there, and this young lady, she began to wait on us. So she come down, and, and I asked her, I said, would you be honest with me? And she said, well, sure. She kind of looked shocked. And I said, if you were to die, where would you spend eternity, heaven or hell? She paused for just a moment. And she said, I don't know. So Penny spoke up and said, have you ever heard of John 3.16? She said, no. I've heard that in a song. And he said, have you ever read it in the Bible? No, I need to do that one of these days. She's in Benton, Arkansas from Arizona and had never read John 3.16. So we, before we left, we went and got our Bible off the bus and handed her a Roman Rhodes card, and we shared the gospel with her. I want Jesus to be attached 24-7. I'm not just going to pack Jesus. I'm not going to just shut my Bible and slide him in, in, in the shelf in the bus and pack it up with the rest of the equipment. I want him attached. I want him to be I want it to get to the place you can't see where I end and he begins. Amen. I want it to be because it's not about that, it's about Jesus. And that's where true revival is. If we get to that place and we, we get like Paul and say, my chains have actually become to the furtherance of the gospel. Our situations, if we'll get to that place in our life, there's a song that's entitled says, God will... Make this trial a blessing. We'll get to that place in our life, the things that we walk through, if we'll just start praising God for where we're at and what He's going to do and where, where we're going with it, you'll find it's a lot better in your walk. You'll find that the trials and the tribulations of life will seem not so strong as they once were. But if you, over and over, park Jesus away, well... Now it's Sunday night, church is over with, and good till Wednesday. And never communicate with Jesus till Wednesday. And then you come to church for an hour to an hour and a half, and then you leave again and you park him again till <coughs> Sunday morning. That's not much of a relationship. That's an abuse. That's an abuse. If I was to do Penny that way, she wouldn't be there long. If I was to leave out, I didn't call her, didn't say a word to her from Sunday night till we, it wouldn't take many days like, like that for the relationship to not be a relationship. So why is it we think we can do Jesus that way? Paul, Paul didn't quit. As I was studying this afternoon and I, and I began to go through the epistles of Paul and everywhere he began, if you begin to read, he's exhorting them in love of what Jesus did. Everything goes back to what Jesus did. Everything goes back to what Jesus did. Jesus did this. Jesus did that. And I rebuke you. 
you. I do all these things because Jesus did this. Because Paul realized as he stood before Agrippa and Festus, he said, I think myself happy today that I get to give an account. And Agrippa said, man, your learnings have made you mad. He said, but almost thou persuadest me. Once again, Paul, Paul was so amazed. He stood before a great audience that day. Still in chains. He still had the chains on his feet. But he gave an account, and the whole audience heard. And when you begin to know the place where he gave that account at, it was where they would have chariot races out on the edge of the Mediterranean. It's a big stadium. See, because those kings, they wanted all of the great popularity. So when they would have somebody there that they wanted to uh, condemn or to try or whatever, they wanted to make a big issue of it. So there was all of these people. Remember who's attached to him. And so Paul was the same then as when the whole palace guard was attached to him. Paul was the same. It didn't matter if he was on a ship, shipwrecked. Paul was the same. We want the same for the furtherance of the gospel. If we want true revival, we will get to the place that we say, it's not about me, it's about you. Lord, show me the things in my life that I need to, to put behind, that I need to squash down, that are taking your place. You take a glass of water that's full, and you take another glass, and you start trying to pour that water in. Where does all the water go? Off the side. There's no room because there's no volume that can be contained because it's completely filled. If we don't empty ourselves, there's no room for God. He can't pour into us. So I ask you tonight, have you emptied yourself? Have you poured yourself out and said, Lord, I need more of you? Are you just walking in all the problems and the troubles of life and you're let, letting it get you lower and lower, dragging you down? Do what Paul did. And just start telling those problems, hey, Whoever that problem is, God is so good. Can I tell you what Jesus did for me? If you start testifying of the love of Jesus, I will assure you a smile on your face. If you know him as your Lord and Savior and you begin to testify about him, you cannot help but smile. And tears may start rolling about the mercy and the love that God has because of the forgiving power that he has. You said you wanted revival. Now I know why the Lord began to show me this passage of Scripture. I want him attached. And I don't consider him to be a chain. I consider him to be what holds me up, what carries me. He's my strength. He's my energy. He's my all in all. So tonight, is he your all in all? If not, I ask you to invite him in your life to be your Lord and be your Savior. Well, you don't know what I've done. I don't need to know. But the Lord will forgive you if you'll confess him. Real who you are, realize who he is, and realize what he did for you to have eternal life. Would you bow your heads? I want you just to take for a moment, and I, and I want you just to look inside your life tonight. Don't think about anybody else. Don't, don't think about anybody but you. Anybody but you.
What has God spoke to you tonight about? What has he showed you in your life that needs to have a change? Some emptying out. Maybe you've disconnected from God yourself because you're just not ready to give up that sin. What is he showing you tonight? Yeah, you're in church. It's Sunday night. I know that this is the stable part of the church. These are the ones that are here. But my friend, there's room for all of us. There's room for me to grow. I want to grow. I want to know more about the Lord. So what is he saying that needs to be removed to where he can take possession? Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking about it. And, and maybe you've come to the place to realize there's, there's never been a change in you. You've always liked coming to church because that's just what we do. But maybe you've realized tonight that you just do not have that relationship that Paul is talking about with Jesus Christ. That relationship of where you ask him to come into your heart and into your life to be your Lord and to be your Savior. Is that you? Maybe you're at that place tonight. Maybe you're just questioning I'm just not sure where I'm at. Well, you need to get that settled tonight. You need to know that you know that you know. So right there where you're sitting, he can hear a whisper all the way to heaven because he's listening to your heart. If that's you and you've realized that you've never truly accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd invite you right now to ask him, Ask him to come into your life. Oh, there's no special prayer. There's no special words. It's just you realizing that you're lost and undone. You realizing that you cannot get into heaven on your own. And you asking Jesus to come into your heart and life and save you. And he says he'll do just that. So if that's you right there where you're at, I'd invite you to pray with me. Now, once again, me praying is not going to save you. You pray. You ask him to come into your life. So if that's you right there where you're sitting, I'd invite you to pray with me. Pray in faith, the Bible says, believing. Right there, right now, you pray, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. And Lord, I'm lost. Lord, I've never truly accepted you as Lord and Savior. But tonight, would you forgive me of my sins? Would you come into my heart and life and Lord, save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a quick moment, if you prayed that prayer in faith, right then, you realized you were lost and undone and you asked Jesus into your heart, would you slip your hand up real high? I want to pray for you. because it's the greatest decision you've ever made that you ask Jesus into your heart and life. Just hold your hand up to where I can see it. Because there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's, it's the greatest thing that you'll ever do. It'll be a life-changing. Here's what I want you to do. If you prayed that prayer right then while others are praying right now, others are still praying, I'm just going to ask you to slip up out of your pew. Brother Andy's standing right over here. He's going to pray with you. We're going to rejoice. So if that's you, would you just ease out of your pew while folks are still praying? You don't have to be embarrassed. It's the greatest decision you ever made. So I want to ask you, church, 
Revival. What about you? You is, is talking about me and you. What are we willing to empty out to let God come in? Would you say, hey, Brother David, there's some things in my life that I, that I need to empty out tonight. I need to get rid of some things so I can let God have more of me. Is that you tonight? If that's you tonight, I invite you to make your way to this altar and you just get in the altar and pray with God. Say, Lord, I don't care if you've already been down tonight or you came this morning. My heart's prayer is that every night you'll move as God tells you to move. Maybe there's some things that you're just dealing with in your family that's in your life that, that you say, Lord, I, I want to have some true revival in my life. But I just don't know how I can empty out anything else. What's left? I'd invite you to come. Would you be obedient tonight to do what God says for you to do? Father, I thank you. I thank you so very much for your word. I thank you for its power. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and gave himself for us. God, I pray right now in this invitation time, Lord, that our, our hearts, Lord, that you would reveal the things to us. Lord, what I need to empty out of my life. The things that are hindering me from serving you the way that I should. The things that are holding my family back. Lord, the things that would make me a better husband, a better spouse, a better wife, a better mom, a better dad, a better grandparent, a better friend. Lord, I ask you right now that you would show us these. And Lord, I pray for a true spirit of revival to break loose. And use us tonight. Jesus name Amen. maybe you just need to come maybe God has placed somebody on your heart tonight that's maybe sitting in this room maybe you just need to go to them and just wrap your arms around them and say I'm thankful for you and what you do God has really placed somebody on my heart we prayed for our brother in the, in the prayer time he's going through a struggle his family I don't need to know the situation. All I need to know is that God has placed him on my heart and he needs some, he needs some love tonight. Brother Aaron, would you make your way down here for just a second? Would you make your way down here? says this, that we're to pray for one another. We're to bear one another's burdens. Bear it. We're not to dig in it. We're to, we're to share it. We're to help hold him up. And that's not what we're doing. So I'm going to ask the church to gather around you. Let's pray for it. That's revival. Come on. That's revival. We're going to gather around him. We're going to pray for it. if we can't come together as a body of believers and, and hold each other up in a time of hurting and pain, who wants it? Who wants revival? Revival comes when we empty ourselves and start thinking about others and thinking about the Lord.
all around us and folks have done voiced it that's when things begin to start happening we're talking about revival we, we don't got clothes up here y'all that's when revival begins to start happening because guess who got out of the seat this over and I'll do that one. physical needs, Lord, that was mentioned. So, Father, right now, Lord, you said what's bound on earth is bound in heaven, and what's loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So, Father, we just ask healing for all these that have requested. You know, you know they're hurting, their pains. God, the, the needs that are family needs, God, the hurt that's there right now, Lord, I pray that you would right now, wherever those individuals are at, God, I pray would realize their condition and call upon you. And so, Lord, right now, we ask you, Lord, for the spirit of revival to abound. God, I pray that you would breathe a fresh breath into it. And God, I pray that as we depart tonight, Lord, to go to our respective homes, Lord, Lord, I ask you right now that we'd be changed. God, that we've emptied ourselves. Lord, we want more of you. This close to you. And Lord, just call upon you. <coughs> Lord, I ask you right now. Grant our request, not for our glory, but for your glory. God, that you'd be honored and glorified. God, I, I pray that the report would be that tomorrow, Lord, I, I just didn't have no pain last night. And I, I, God, just touched me and healed me, Lord. We pray for a good report. We pray for those that are lost, God, that they'd return to you. Broken hearted. Their hearts would be mended. Lord, we come expecting. We thank you for it. Amen. 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 All right, if you'll, if you'll have a seat and ushers, if y'all will come and get in place, we're going to take up a love offering. And if y'all believe that, that uh, God sent the Crusaders to Green Valley so we can be revived, you just say a big hearty amen. 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 amen.
So uh, if you're writing a check, you just write out to Green Valley, please, and we'll write them one check at the end of the week. And man, be praying about what God would have you give this week, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for the word of God that was preached tonight. And we thank you so much for uh, men like Paul, Lord, that we can read about and study about and, and just set goals in our heart, Lord, to be more like Jesus, Father. We thank you so much for David and, and Penny and Stephen, Lord, and their families. Father, I just pray you continue to use them in a mighty way. Thank you for sending them here to this church here, Green Valley Baptist Church. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that, that uh, the folks here will ask you what you would have them to give for the love offering this week, Father. Father, that they would do it. And Father, I just pray that you continue to move in our midst. Father, I pray that the lost who come would get saved, Lord, and the Christians who come who are not walking close to you, Lord, that they would uh, get things right with you, Lord, and confess their sins and turn from them and repent and have a, a, a intimate relationship with you, Father God, that you desire with each and every one of us, Father. Bless this time now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. We sing holy, 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 holy. Yes, you are holy, holy, holy. Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Would you stand and let's sing this together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Lord and open, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, 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 everybody, holy, 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 yes, you are holy, 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 Lord, you are holy, 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 I want to see you, yes, you are holy, Lord, you are holy, 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 Lord, you are holy, 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 Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. All right. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, prayer groups over here and over here. Invite somebody to come. Amen? Amen. We're going to be here all day. Uh, if you don't have anything to do in the morning, at probably about 9 o'clock, um, i got to change the air conditioner on the bus. And um, i tell you what I'll do. If you come up here, we'll start out with a Bible study, and then we'll put an air conditioner on. That's a deal. Amen. Amen. Got a backhoe. <laughs> <laughs>